or of Putin. He's, uh, when you see Trump with Putin, as I have on a few occasions, he's like the 12-year-old boy that goes to high school and meets the captain of the football team. <laughs> uh, my hero. It is really creepy. It's really creepy. The scary thing is that for countries like Australia and many European countries, uh, we may find ourselves... Uh, are we going to find ourselves not dealing just with two autocracies in Russia and China? But is tr what is Trump's America going to look like? This is a guy leading a party that is no longer committed to democracy as we understand it. A, a chilling statement at this point heard around the world, but perfectly put, those are the stakes. The decision now left solely and squarely in the hands of the American voter. The fate of the world order as we know it. Former Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull giving voice to an acute anxiety shared by many senior leaders and senior government officials all around the world. That the United States is now very, very alarmingly, but very realistically, at the brink of a possible dark new era, one where it veers into autocracy, an American autocracy. Donald Trump isn't even pretending otherwise, right? He's not saying one thing behind closed doors and another on the podium. The self-described day one dictator, perhaps inspired by his cataloged obsession with strong men on the world stage, people like Vladimir Putin, has been open and public about his desire to use American government institutions to target his political enemies. As you heard, he idolizes, in a, quote, creepy way, Vladimir Putin, Putin, for his part, today suggested in a speech that the West faces the prospect of nuclear war now, should it continue to support or intervene more directly in Ukraine. And The New York Times is today reporting that Donald Trump plans to meet privately with Hungarian Prime Minister, another man he has a creepy affection for, Viktor Orban, a right-wing nationalist at his club Mar-a-Lago next week. These developments taken together bring into even sharper focus this afternoon that with U.S. institutions passing the buck now to the American voter, it is on us to choose the path forward for America, democracy or autocracy. Joining our conversation, it is a privilege to get to speak to the aforementioned former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull. He served as Prime Minister of Australia from 2015 to 2018. Thank you so much for being with us. Your comments were heard around the world. I woke up to them on, on Morning Joe, and I've seen them everywhere. Well, well, uh, look, it's a, it, I think it's a very important point to make. Uh, the, the, the Trump fascination with Putin is, is a very creepy one. And, and it was palpable. I mean, people who have been with Trump and Putin, and indeed people who saw him with Putin at that Helsinki conference will see the same thing. Uh, he, he has a fascination with Putin. He's in awe of Putin, probably admires him, probably wishes he could be as uh, omnipotent uh, in the America as Putin is in Russia. But uh, it's, a very, it's very disconcerting when you see the leader of the free world uh, being so interested in tyrants. And, of course, it's not just Putin. I mean, look at his bromance with uh, Kim Jong-un. How, how improbable was that? You know, effectively exchanging what I think he described as love letters. I think it is alleged to be among the classified things he took with him to Mar-a-Lago to hang on to them. And I understand he has framed pictures of himself with Kim Jong-un, which is, it's, it's, it's so bizarre, it sometimes falls off the radar of the things we talk about, but it should be top of mind. Um, I, I want to ask you what the conversation was among world leaders when you saw Trump fawn over Putin and Kim Jong-un. Look, this was particularly the case at the Hamburg G20 in 2017. It was very disconcerting. I mean, you saw on the one hand... Uh, Trump's uh, very, very apparent distaste for Angela Merkel, the Chancellor, you know, effectively the Prime Minister of Germany. On the other hand, his fascination with Putin. And it, it was an extraordinary contrast. Uh, so the, you know, his, I mean, his instincts are not democratic. 
I mean, I mean, try, and, and again, he, he says the quiet part out loud, as you said in your introduction. You know, we don't have to, you know, speculate or psychoanalyze Donald Trump. He says all this stuff. Um, he is not a conservative. You know, people people often talk about conservative conservatism and so forth. Trump's not a conservative. Conservatives believe in the rule of law. They defend established institutions. You know, they 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 are not conservatives. Do not embrace radical change. They want change to be incremental and gradual. Uh, Trump is determined to use every lever he can get, and he says he will do that, to maximise his power and, of course, uh, you know, take action against his enemies. I mean, didn't he say it a bit mm -hmm. of public speech? Uh, mm -hmm. I will be your retribution. Well, you know, that's hardly the uh, that's hardly the language of someone who wants to bring everybody together. You see, I've always believed the, the role of a national leader is to unite their nation, their country, their community, to bring people together. Now, what Trump does and what, and, and of course, Viktor Orban, who he's also fascinated with, as you said, does the same thing in Hungary. What he does, what his goal is, is to divide, take advantage of those divisions and then use that to, you know, rile up uh, his supporters, you know, so that he can get enough support to win. And it's this, you know, this is supported by the right wing media in America, particularly Fox News, what what I call angertainment. Uh, and, it, mm. you know, it, it's it's doing unbelievable damage to your country. I mean, you, you live there, you know what it's like. The problem